Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase. Give you the best in classic contemporary R&B. Through the decades, we got some special guests in the house. But first, I want to introduce to you my co-host. Joining us in the studio today is Mr. Kevin White, music historian himself. Kevin, uh, what's happening, brother? You're too kind. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you with us here. Julian Seward from WPPM 106.5 FM in Philadelphia. What's happening, Julian? Everything is good. And of course, we got the one and only Kyle Mack in the studio, our producer, and a radio host, and uh, it's good to have you here with us, Kyle. Always thankful to be here, Tim. Right now, we have a special guest we're going to introduce to you. He's a musician, a recording artist, a singer, a songwriter, and uh, he is performing now with one of the greatest groups in American popular music history, one of the Motown greats, the fabulous Four Tops. We're going to welcome to the show the incomparable Mr. Ronnie McNair. Let's give Ronnie Whoa. a round of applause, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and welcome Ronnie to the show. What's happening, y'all? What's happening, man? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just, I'm just a guy that's fortunate to have a good job. <laughs> uh, listen, man, we, 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 we thank you for taking the time to come on the show here today, and it took us a while to get you here, but we're glad you're here. We got you, my man. How you doing, man? How's everything going? Now you on the road now, or, or currently touring? Uh, we, we've been off a month. Um, we're getting ready to go back Wednesday, go to the West Coast. Okay. I get to play my winter golf. I'll be in Arizona. Uh, Palm Springs, then we go to Hawaii, then we come back to Dallas, then I come back to the snow. <laughs> oh, yeah, how about that? We're supposed to be getting a little more snow coming in here, but it's good to have you on the show here today. And and uh, listen, you've been with the Four Tops. Now, in addition to Duke Fakir, the original member, you are probably, you are the longest tenured member with the Four Tops now, right? In addition been, to Duke. It's been 22 and a half years, and it'll be 23 in March. Wow. Congratulations on that. And um, I want to ask you, what was it like, uh, how did you get started with the Four Tops? How did you become a member? Say that again. How did you, how did you become a member of the Four Tops? How did uh, this come about? That's, just, that's just kind of like a Cinderella story. I was, um, first of all, Ronaldo Benson, who was uh, an original member of the group. You know, he's, Obi Benson was telling me, he's the one that, you know, he's one of the writers on What's Going On, okay. Save the Children, and Holy, 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 off of uh, Marvin Gaye's album. Mm-hmm. So he kind of took me on his arm. We met each other in the early 70s, around 74. And man, we just had a wonderful whole 34 years before we passed together. Mm-hmm. And, um, anyway, I moved to uh, Las Vegas from Detroit. I mean, from Pontiac, Michigan. I'm sorry. Okay. That's where I'm from, Pontiac, Michigan. Mm-hmm. I moved there in, to Las Vegas in 1990. Mm-hmm. And I went there and I played the lounges and stuff there. And around 2001, 2000, mm-hmm. uh, Obi called me and said, hey, man, our music director, he plays the piano, is having trouble with his mm-hmm. kidneys, so we need you to come in and play. So he was looking out for me because he knew I was out there, man, and I was you know, in Las Vegas. You know, you got 24 hours to do whatever you want to do. So he probably knew, get me out the street, you know. <laughs> so he pulled me in, and uh, I started playing piano. I wasn't the music director, but I played piano while uh, uh, George Roundtree was gone. Mm-hmm. So... He came back and Duke came to me and said, hey, man, we want you to stay. Uh, and I said, and do what? Mm-hmm. He said, we want you to just hang, man, because this guy might go in the toxic shop. You know, so they had me stand around. Then one day Duke came to me and said, man, start learning the background of the steps. So I looked at him. I said, OK. So, you know, he said, this is a real job. Now, I know you just standing around, but this is a job. I said, OK. Mm-hmm. They were giving me 300 a day with expenses paid, man, everything. So mm-hmm. I said, OK. Maybe don't have to hustle this hard in Las Vegas, but mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, it was a good thing. So around March of, um, when was it? 2000, yeah, around March in 2000. Uh, no, in that summer, mm-hmm. it was around July. And Levi got sick, man, okay. and couldn't make the gig. Now, we were already in South Carolina at the gig mm-hmm. to open up for the Beach Boys. Oh, wow, great show. It's, it's, a one, it's one thing when you can't make the gig and you're not there. Mm-hmm. But when you at the gig and mm-hmm. talking about you can't come on stage, that, that that's another thing. Wow. Mm-hmm. So they came to me and said, uh, you know, you haven't heard the news that Levi sick can't make the gig. So <laughs> the first thing came to me was, oh, so we can't get paid. <laughs> the <guy> said, <laughs> we we got to pay today's pay for yesterday's money. Mm-hmm. So something told me to say, I said, well, man, if, four, if, if I put my tuxedo on, and go up on that stage when we get paid. And the manager, our manager was Ron Strassen, and he said, man, Ronnie, can you do it? 
I said, nah, never, man. I've been here standing around for some months. I said, you know. He said, man. So he called Duke up, and Duke said, Ryan King, I love to give him 40 minutes. Can you do it? I said, I'll tell you, like I told Ryan, Duke, it's now, for ne- it's now or never, man. You know, I ain't going to just keep standing up here. So before I could put my tuck on, the valet man said, come here, man. Put see, can you wear these pants? And they threw Levi's suit on me. <laughs> <laughs> now, check this out. <laughs> Levi got long arms. Mm-hmm. I was six two. Well, okay. I was about six one. Now, mm-hmm. but I was, you know, I was somewhere in there. I was in that that mm-hmm. range. So he, okay. he he put the coat on me and fit, but his pants, man, I was flooding. Mm-hmm. I had to wear the pants so low. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I wore my pants so low, but with the coat on me, you couldn't. I was like one of them boys that wear their pants down. You know, behind me, let the <laughs> show. That's how I was. <laughs> so. So I had my own shoes. I was 12 and a half, almost 13. So I mm-hmm. got my own shoes. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I went out on stage, man. And the secret thing that we had mm-hmm. really made that work. They had a guy named Theo Peoples mm-hmm. yes, that was already in, in the back with the, with uh, the tops. When Lawrence first died, the first top died, okay. Theo had been there two years. Mm-hmm. So when you... When your hub, you lose your hub of a wheel, but you got another hub mm-hmm. back there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when it came time to step up, mm-hmm. they naturally Theo's voice was the kind of voice that he could get up there and leave last key with that strength. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a Marvin Gaye singer like mm-hmm. that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but he, man, we walked out on stage and we did three nights straight, mm-hmm. and that was my debut with them. And let me tell you something, man. I was nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I woke, I walked out and I had to say, uh, "Ask the Lord." Mm-hmm. And I walked out on stage, man. My my my, my hands started trembling with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, George was back, the, the music director. And he looked at me, and so I said, "You know what? I can't do this." So I started walking back and forth like I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and ever since then, man, when when two thousand January two thousand one came, Levi uh, retired. And do say you got the spot. Mm. I've been a four times from January the first till this day, today. Well, congratulations, man, on that. We'll become a member of the four top. I'm blessed, man. So uh, you know, I've seen. Sorry, right. I, I, I want to ask you that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm, I'm sorry. But the the, uh, the story. Uh, so when you were um, filling in for the opening slots, well, when you're doing the shows with the Beach Boys, correct? Uh, yeah. When when Levi got sick, uh, did Levi? get better and then you were you had to go back to the wings and then you came back as a member of the four tops after that when you retired no. when levi saw that i could do it, that it worked mm-hmm. no matter you know uh when he saw that he came to me about a few weeks later and i was saying this is another really funny story here. he came back to me and says one day he walked up to me and said suit up man i looked at him i said man you here what you talking about he said, I don't feel like <laughs> But the guy, you know what? But now I can see why Obi brought me. Mm-hmm. And, and he knew I was a jack of all trades in that in the music part. Mm-hmm. See? So he was he was looking out for the whole group then. When Levi came and said that, I said, okay. So this particular time when he wanted me to suit up, we were at the Westbury up there in New York. Mm-hmm. Okay, theater in the round. Okay. We were opening, Great we were spot. with Gladys Knight. Okay. So when it came time, they wore white satin suits mm-hmm. with royal blue shirts and white shoes. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no size 13 white shoes. Mm-hmm. I got my black shoes. Mm-hmm. So, so they, we went all day trying to find them. We couldn't find them because it was too close to the gig when he said, suit up. So then uh, I said, man, I'm not going on the stage with no black shoes on and no white suits and no no no, no, no uh, whatever kind of shirt they had on. I said, I ain't going. Mm-hmm. And so Obi said, I wear my black shoes. I said, what you gonna have to do? Cause I ain't going. And so finally, when it came down to time to go down the ramp, I said, I can't do this to him. And I walked down the ramp, man, with my black shoes on, my white suit and the shirt. So when we got up on the stage, the first thing I heard from the crowd is, where's Levi? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I got, so I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed right there, but I'm trying to help save the day. Mm-hmm. Then somebody hollered up, what's up with the black shoes? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so Kim, mm-hmm. I looked over at Duke. I, I, Duke, I said, man, you better explain this. So I'm walking out today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. And Duke made the story up that the clothes didn't get there late till late and mm-hmm. shoes didn't come. But that's what happened, uh, Kyle. I, he came, 
he would come to me and tell me to suit up. And not only that time, it mm-hmm. was about a couple of other times. Mm-hmm. And when we, uh, Levi, the last gig that Levi did, we did the last supper, I guess that's what you call it, for Clinton when he was going out of office. Mm-hmm. He had a dinner in December. Mm-hmm. And that was the last time Levi performed with us. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then January of 2001, I became a full fledged thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2001, I came a full fledged four times. Wow. Thank the Lord. Wow. <laughs> now, didn't you do the TV special they had when, when Aretha Franklin was on and they, had, they brought Levi out in the wheelchair? Were you part of that, uh, that special? The four times. Oh, yeah. Is that yeah. the 40th or 50th anniversary? Oh, yeah. yeah, Obi and myself is the ones who put, pushed him out in the wheelchair. Okay. okay. <laughs> and he sang some And Theo sang, Theo sang, uh, I believe in you and me. I believe in yeah. you and me with, uh, while he was singing it with Aretha. Aretha, yeah. That's a great, that's one of the great, that's a great concert. That whole concert yeah. is good, you know, you guys. Yeah, it brings a lot of uh, mm-hmm. feelings and memories into it, man. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you see how he sang, when he sang his part, mm-hmm. you could still see why yeah. he was leaving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he could still sing. Even, even you know, being wheelchair, he could still sing. You know, uh, had his gift. Kevin and I had just watched it. I I forgot that I had the DVD of that special, mm-hmm. and uh, I had I pulled it off the shelf. And Kevin and I had just watched it. What maybe two weeks ago? That was about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was yeah, a lot of fun. It's, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it. The special still holds up as mm-hmm. such an entertaining experience. Mm-hmm. We 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 love that. And I also have the uh, they put it out on CD as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was our fiftieth. Yeah, right. it was fifth time before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a great, great concert, great concert. So you've been there with him ever since, man. I congratulate you on your on your success with the Four Tops, and I'm glad you're, you're keeping it going, though. Um, I'm glad you're keeping, trying. keeping it going, you keeping know. it moving. Yeah. I have a I have a question. So not so long, not not too long after you joined the Four Tops, a couple of years, you guys put out a CD called mm-hmm. "Going Home Around Midnight" mm-hmm. with it with a with a jazz group. Yeah, Simone Vat Vat. Right. And it had a limited release. I believe it was released only on the Jazz Group's website. Um, what brought that about? Because as to my understanding, that was probably the last full length album that you guys had done. That is the only album other than the Christmas album in 1997 and 1998, I think, mm-hmm. right. that the Four Tops had done since 1980 something. Wow. That's mm-hmm. the only right. new wow. music mm-hmm. that the Four Tops put out. Like you said, it was that, right. that jazz album and only the Christmas album. Mm-hmm. Right. And I listened to that jazz album from, from start to finish a, a bunch of times when it came out. And I, but I think what they were trying to do was do like the Temptations did with uh, Forever Yours. I think mm-hmm. that was the name of that one. Uh, yeah. They did a theme with a lot of uh, mm-hmm. standard songs on it. Right. Oh, for lovers only. For lovers only. Lovers yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do something on Back to Class with Drew, Drew Schultz. Couple songs yeah, on there. Sure. But, yeah. but I'm talking about on a major, mm-hmm. we never had anything since mm-hmm. the 80s, man, as right. a whole yeah. album other than that jazz right. album. So that been what, when she was my girl album was the last one? No, no that man. was the Indestructible, probably. Oh, don't tell me that is over and all those, those songs. That was. I think it was on Casablanca, yeah. whatever Casablanca. it was. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's been a while since I'm, you know. Yeah, it had a song on it, one of my most favorite songs mm-hmm. of the Four Tops, and we'd never do it, because mm-hmm. it probably didn't get a lot of play. Mm-hmm. A song called Sexy Ways. Oh, I remember that. That's a good song. That did, that did yeah, well look, fill it off the I've been telling them all the time, we need to do Sexy Ways, y'all. Mm-hmm. Somebody heard it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good song. It did well in Philadelphia. You know, we got a lot of airplane yeah. in, in, on the stations here in Philly. So that's a good thing, man. So now, uh, with the Four Tops, you said you were the music director for a little while with the group? No, no, no. I was never the music music director. I just came in and played piano. Okay, tell us about your instruments now. You're a musician. How many instruments do you play and what instruments do you play? Piano is only my real my mm-hmm. real instrument. I mean, you, nowadays they got synthesizers mm-hmm. that have all kinds of sounds on mm-hmm. them. So naturally, mm-hmm. I'm a keyboard player. When you got a horn, you can play a horn line. You mm-hmm. just play it. But mm-hmm. the good thing about me is I've stood in front of 10 horns for mm-hmm. 22 years. Okay, I've stood in front of the guitar. Mm-hmm. Drums. I, I know what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can easily reenact that when you're doing this stuff with this, uh, all this new music they got and the synthesizers and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's nothing like the real thing. Mm-hmm. And it's coming back to that. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One well, of I like the, the way, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, was I, say, I like the way you incorporate the piano playing in your in your show today. That's you know? exactly yeah, what I was going to say. say. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> One of the highlights yeah, of the show the that I just yeah. saw mm-hmm. was when during this Christmas mm-hmm. when you come in and play the keyboards mm-hmm. and then T comes out and sings. That's mm-hmm. actually that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's great. You know how that started though? No, no. I would do 
I would ask them for a long time, man, Fort Tosh would not do what, what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I would ask Obi all the time. I said, man, man, I said, Obi, how come y'all don't ever do what's going mm-hmm. on, man? That that don't make sense. Man, one of the biggest songs ever done. Mm-hmm. And he would tell me, he said, well, you know, don't worry about that, man. Just follow the money come to the bank. So I didn't get to it. I didn't ask no more about any of that. Mm-hmm. But I kept on, even when Obi was gone, when he left us, mm-hmm. I kept saying, dude, come on, man. Somebody needs to do this one of the greatest songs mm-hmm. ever, man. Every come song, on. Yeah. And your, your boy, your mm-hmm. brother wrote it. Come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So finally, they gave in. They let me do it. Mm-hmm. So as we were doing it, one day I told Turan, I said, Turan, mm-hmm. see, well, I'll go over and play the little solo in between what's going on, mm-hmm. too. That's how I started. Okay. Okay. So when I walked over, I told Turan, I said, Turan, you know what? When I go to play, when I, when I go to get my mic from you, why don't you take it and act like you still in the mic? <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, Man, people love that great. from it's then on. So it worked with any time I go and play the piano. Mm-hmm. If it was anything. Mm-hmm. Right. He comes over there. And, he, and one night, you know, he, this is what he really, he got me that first night. Well, I don't know when you saw it when we did that mm-hmm. on this Christmas. But he, <laughs> I wasn't looking for him. He was supposed to give me the mic back. Uh-huh. And, and it really did good because he took the mic and ran. <laughs> he kept on going to That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. The crowd loved it, man. Yeah. The crowd loves oh, it. Yeah. That's, that's a great that's bit. Just, yeah. You got to keep that in there. You got to keep that as part of the show, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's great to see, you know, you musicianship too from the guys in the group. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, another thing I, I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. No, I, I said, yeah, I, that's, that's, I like, you know, you keep that in the show. That's great when you get, get up there and play. I like that. Okay. That's part of the show, yeah. yeah well, Go ahead, Kevin. Another thing I wanted to ask um, Ronnie about is actually a little bit before um, your time with the Tops. Um, I, I just recently figured out that you actually participated in a song I love, um, I Couldn't Believe It by Ruffin and Kendrick. Ooh, Can okay. you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, wow. I, mean, I, just, I just stumbled across that. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Excellent. I wrote that um when was when did we do that? That was in the, in the kind of the mid eighties, I think. Yeah, I about eighty six maybe. I'm gonna tell you how that came up. David yeah. Ruffin went he went to prison for some taxes, okay? Mm-hmm. And I went to Obi, went me and my one of my writing uh, partners, uh, Mike Crump, we wrote the song. Mm-hmm. And um I went to Obi, I said, Obi, I hear Davis getting out of his prison, man. Could you do something for us? Mm-hmm. I said, take this song and see what David do. And I said, if you do, we'll give you we'll give you a third of the man with us. Mm-hmm. And so he took it. David came to my house, man, mm-hmm. in Pontiac mm-hmm. and sang the song on a four track recorder for me. Now, when he did that, that did something for me right. to, mm-hmm. to take time out. Here's a guy that sung my girl. Right. Mm-hmm. Come to my house mm-hmm. and sing that song for me, man. And you know what? I told him afterwards, I said, David, if I don't make a dad, man, uh, I am so flattered and so great, so thankful that the man who sung my girl thought to sing my song. Mm-hmm. And you know what he said to me? He looked at me and said, I did this song because I respect your talent and don't you forget it. Mm-hmm. And that made me feel so mm-hmm. That's awesome. good, man. That's awesome. Awesome. For him, I said, okay, mm-hmm. you gonna respect my talent, I ain't did mm-hmm. I mean, I've done some things, but you know, mm-hmm. but he said, nah, man, you deserve me to do your song. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, that's, that's a awesome. great story. Yes, it is, man. That's awesome. Yeah. While we're on the subject of David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks, I want to talk about another gentleman by the name of Dennis Edwards. And we're coming back on the anniversary of the passing of Dennis Edwards, and they're doing this big anniversary celebration on, on uh, Facebook Live, an event that's coming up with Alec Braveman soon. Can you say a few words about working with Dennis Edwards? I know it was on your 50th anniversary uh, show that you did on television, and also you guys did some tours with Dennis. Say a few words about Dennis Edwards for us. Uh, well, all I can say, man, Dennis, he's one of the great ones, you know. Um, you know, everybody, they talk about a lot of people, man, with all of this, uh, people have problems in their personal lives, okay? Everybody got problems in their personal life. But when you can keep on doing what you do and show it, like Dennis and David and a lot of the other ones, man, you know, we all got mm-hmm. things, demons that we go through. But these guys came through, man. He just, see, Dennis, I call it the gravel pit. Mm-hmm. David, Dennis, Ali, mm-hmm. Theo people, mm-hmm. uh, Teddy Pendergrass, these people got that gravel pit. Mm-hmm. Some of them have more than others, mm-hmm. but I call that the signature voice. Mm-hmm. When you got a signature voice like that, man, mm-hmm. you got a hit record. If you got, you can have a mediocre song and they'll make it a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got that tone in their voices. Mm-hmm. I, I work with some guys and 
some people they want to always do all of these runs. You, the, the melody is mm-hmm. da 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 da, but they want. Uh, mm-hmm. I said, you don't understand. You got magic in your throat. Mm-hmm. If you say three blind mice, you sound fantastic. Mm-hmm. There, you ain't got to prove all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. But mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's that, that's the producer talking. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Now, you've done some producing in your career, uh, Ronnie. Say what, Have say you done any, any producing? Have you done? Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've done a producer. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm really proud of. A lot of people don't even know I did. I produced a song on Rance Allen mm-hmm. called. Uh, uh, it's the album was called "Feel Like Going On," mm-hmm. and I wrote a song. One of my songs I wrote on that album was called "God Can Do the Impossible." Mm-hmm. And man, you talking about. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Have you have you heard that, Tim? Mm, I, it's, the name is going fast. Me, my, look, if you have it, look it up. I will do that. And listen mm-hmm. to Rance's performance on that. Okay. Man, I was in awe because mm. he's one of the greatest uh, artist singers you could ever find, man. Mm-hmm. And this cat did my song so much justice, man. Mm-hmm. But it never, it was with Fantasy Records. Mm-hmm. They didn't okay. really push it, mm-hmm. you know. The fan- so, is that the ones out of Philadelphia, Kevin? Fantasy Records? Um, is that Philadelphia? Is that a- no, I don't believe they're out of yeah. Philly. Okay. I want to say New Ooh. York. It was in New York. Fantasy. Oh, Fantasy Records. Is it- oh, no. Fantasy was out, out of Berkeley, California. Oh, Berkeley. Oh, Berkeley. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of artists on there. They, they had, they, their big group was, um, oh, man. Golly. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of a lot of artists on that label though. I remember the fact. I, I can't think of that yeah. group. Man. I don't know why I can't think of that. I'm getting old, Tim. <laughs> that's, all, that's all right, brother. Yeah, I know Sp- in the nineties or late eighties they signed a lot of R and B acts. So like mm-hmm. I think the Spinners put out an album on Fantasy. Okay. The Dramatics put out an the album Dramatics, on Fantasy. Yeah. I think they bought the label. Had- See, they bought the label. They bought Stacks label after Stacks okay. went down. Kind of, they bought, okay. and then they never really did anything to push the stuff. Mm-hmm. Got you. Mm-hmm. Got you. Got you. Mm-hmm. Speaking of albums, I'm going to ask you if you can see this album. What does this album mean? This, <laughs> me this album right here, what does this album mean to you? Tell us about this album right here. <laughs> Let me tell you. I, I, when I woke up one night, I was with this company called Prodigal Records, and I had a song called Wendy is Gone Out mm-hmm. that did pretty well across country. It didn't do the South that well. Mm-hmm. I was with Barney Alias, okay. one of the big shots mm-hmm. in the business. Mm-hmm. And uh, one night, I went to sleep with Prodigal Records. I woke up the next morning and his son called me and said, you know what, you heard the news? I said, what news? You know, we're, we're, we're with Motown now. I said, well, you with Motown? I ain't with no Motown. He said, no, nah, man, my dad sold the company. He said, he ain't sell me. He sold you and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, man, how you gonna do me like this? So I went and had a talk with Barney. I said, Barney, how you gonna do that, man? We got a hit record across country. Man, why would you do that? He said, he gave me off. I can't refuse, man. I said, so what I'm gonna do now? He said, we're going to work it out. So anyway, I go out to California trying to, you know, uh, we negotiate this new contract. I'm already in a contract, but I'm new- negotiating this new stuff with them. I'm walking inside a uh, Joe Bet, which is their, one of their publishing companies. Mm-hmm. I'm walking around, man, I hear this girl singing. Mm. And so I asked the secretary, I said, uh, who is that? She said, little white girl. I said, you lying. <laughs> and I went around the corner. And here she was mm-hmm. in the little room playing a guitar, man, with mm-hmm. a band around her head. Mm-hmm. Talking. She was jamming too. And I, and I walked in and I said, hey, uh, my name is Ryan McNeil. I said, uh, what's your name? She said, Tina Marie. Mm-hmm. I said, well, what, you, got a, you got a project here? She said, no, nah, they just used me to do demos for Diana Ross and Thelma Houston. Mm-hmm. I said, look at here. You, get, you, you sound black. You, you, you know what? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to ask Mr. Gordon, can I do something with you? Mm-hmm. I called him up. I said, hey. I said, they said, look here, man, you got a girl, you sound black, let me do something on her, man. Uh, all right, Ryan, all right, Ryan, is how you want to talk about that. So I went on and did it. Man, she, it was like magic. Mm-hmm. She went in that studio and she wrote, and we did, we did an album, man, called Rare Tea. Mm-hmm. They kept it on the, they kept it in the can for a long time. Okay. And they called me to come out there. And it was demos and they still had me come out to try to remix it to good enough. We, you know, mm-hmm. cause they took her away from me. Okay. Uh, yeah. After eight songs, mm-hmm. they said, we think you take continue in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. I said, what are you talking about? So it took you eight songs to see that? <laughs> and she wrote five of them. Mm-hmm. And then so I, and, and then so I said, we want her to be a rock artist. And I looked mm-hmm. at Suzanne the Pass mm-hmm. and, the, and the rest of them. I said, y'all crazy. This girl got black in her throat. She's going to be an R&B artist or a jazz artist. Mm-hmm. 
That's just what you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But they took it from me. That's all right. Yeah. But but see, one thing I think what happened was I showed them who she really was. See, they did. were just using her for the demo mm-hmm. when they heard her on eight different songs and mm-hmm. seen what, what kind of arsenal she had in her mm-hmm. voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. We can't let her get away. From this. Mm-hmm. So, Yep, she's one of the all That meant a great deal to me, yeah. that album. You asked me mm-hmm. what it was. Mm-hmm. it was. And that was my second appearance yeah. on Soul Train. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You took the words out of my mouth. Yep. That's what I was going to yeah. ask you about now. Now, mm-hmm. we've, all sat, we've all asked this question to our uh, uh, guests in some kind of capacity just because of how unique and monumental it is to each person that's been on Soul Train. So what was that first experience like for you, that first time that you... Uh, we're able to be on Soul Train leading up to it, that experience of, you know, getting that call and understand that you can actually, you know, be on the show. What was that like for you? Well, you know, it was like, uh, you know, how you do a dream come true. Mm-hmm. You don't really, do, you know, you really, you do you do what you got to do. But when, it, when it good things happen, you, you sometimes you're so in awe. And I was, and I was nervous about that. I said, Soul Train, mm-hmm. oh man, you know, <laughs> so... When I went on, and it was from, it wasn't with the Tina. Tina was second. Tina came okay. 10 years later. Okay. But when I first got on there, I, and I, I got on there, man, not when I was on the stage, and you pantomime that show, you know, you don't really, mm-hmm. you can't sing with the record, but you really pantomime. Mm-hmm. So when I was up there, man, and I looked out there, and, you know, it's different from when you're looking at it on TV. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like when you look at football. Mm-hmm. You look at football on TV, it's a whole lot different than when you're at the live any, mm-hmm. any day. So mm-hmm. I was standing up there, man, and I saw the people dancing. And it just, man, my, I'm just, man, I just be thankful. Mm-hmm. My brother. So what's your name again, man? My name is Ju- to Julian. Julian. My, my name is Julian. Julian. Julian, my yeah, man, so Julian. Okay, so. I just thought about how blessed I was. Mm-hmm. I never forget about where I come from because mm-hmm. yeah, ain't nothing promised, man. So for that. me to be on Soul Train that first time was mm-hmm. a guy. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> what is what is the studio like? Is it small? Is it a big studio? What was it? What was it actually like the studio? It, it, it was a pretty good sized mm-hmm. studio. Mm-hmm. You know, it was good. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You, you, it is when you see things on TV. Mm-hmm. It's so much difference mm-hmm. than live. It's not as big as you would think it was mm-hmm. on TV. But it was a nice sad studio to get all those dancers in there. Mm-hmm. They had at least like 20 dancers, something mm-hmm. like that. Now, when you're doing your performances on Soul Train, do you do both? Like if you do usually do two songs, most of the artists do two songs. Do you do them back to back or do they do, do they do it in the you know order they do them on television? Like they do a song, take a break, uh, and come back? do them on the order. That's in television. Oh, they do it like in live order. Okay. So they yeah, stop yeah. and does, it, does the next act come on? Then you come back on after them? They do it the way that they've shown on television? Yeah, I don't know if there was another act on with me that okay. day. You talking about a long time, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to think. What, see, because I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because when you do two songs, I think mm-hmm. you only have that one act. I right. think. Okay. I don't. You, if you have one song, they might have two mm-hmm. acts. But right. I can't really remember mm-hmm. if there was another act. On. It's such an iconic I television that we show. did. I didn't do it back to back. I right. did. Then they did some dancing, and then I came on. And oh, did okay, that. so they pretty much do it in show order. Then that's pretty good to be able to do it that way. So, all right. So you talked about your first appearance on there. Now, talk about being on there with Tina Marie. That's a classic episode. Talk about that experience. Uh, well, this is what was happening at the time that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, that was ten years. I had left Motown mm-hmm. right after they told you know they weren't doing nothing with my career, and I said. I told Barney Ennis, I said, Barney, look here, man. We came here with a record on the charts. I was number 77 in Billboard with a bullet. Mm-hmm. And they just let the record die. That kind of mm-hmm. broke, that kind of did something to me. I right. said, you know what, man? Mm-hmm. And they said, well, this is a company where you have to wait your time. I said, I, I'm not waiting. My time, wait my time for what? Mm-hmm. My time is here. I got a record out there. They don't mm-hmm. want to push it. Mm-hmm. So I wrote Barry Gordy a letter. And I said, uh, sir, my mom and dad is still living, man. You ain't gonna do nothing with me. Would you please let me go? I don't want to blame this on you. That's just how I said in the letter, man. I said, I don't want to blame this on you. You got 28 acts, you're telling us all we're gonna be a star. Mm-hmm. I done been in this, man. I understand what this is all about, but it's not gonna do nothing with me. Mm-hmm. Please let me go. Mm-hmm. I done been with some other people, didn't do nothing with me. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. And you know what? He wrote me back and said, you're absolutely right. And that's been my man ever since. Then he told me, "You want to get, you want to get your check a few months later. Let you after you're gone, 
I said, you do that? He said, yeah, man. Man gave paid me my salary wow. for almost four months after I left there, man. Awesome. He, my man. I don't care what they say about it. Mm-hmm. You hear me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the song, you know, we got to stop meeting like this, man. Just an incredible song. And that was on one of her. I think that was one of Tina's biggest albums, wasn't it? The uh, yeah, Kevin. But let me tell you this, Tim. This so, yeah. so, okay. So now nah, nothing happened for me at that mm-hmm. point. I had a few things going on. I did this to that. So I'm sitting up there. In, in my house. And one thing I always did, I don't care if I was whatever's happening, man. Mm-hmm. I'm out of the street, wasting my time, whatever I'm doing. The one thing I always did, play the piano mm-hmm. and practice. So I got a call one day and it was Tina. Mm-hmm. Ten years later, man, she said, Ryder, this is Tina. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, baby. She said, look, can you come to L.A.? Mm-hmm. I said, I need you to sing. I said, I could have came yesterday. And so, <laughs> so, <laughs> She sent me a t- and the song was in a higher key, man. Okay. But I was in a shape too. Mm-hmm. I went out there, man, and did that song right on the spur of the moment. She mm-hmm. went out there and we dogged. Mm-hmm. And so then she took me to up there on Rodeo Road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is funny, man. And we we got some stuff that they were going to take it back. Mm-hmm. I didn't do all that, but they we went up there and they got me some $800 suede pants mm-hmm. and some. Fifteen hundred dollars shoes. Mm-hmm. The coat was fifteen hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and our shirt was five hundred something. And so I, you know, I said, "Oh boy, I'm shocked." And I had on some fruit of the noon mm-hmm. dogs. <laughs> 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 but wait a minute. So I went on the show, man. And so we had no kind of. I, I said, "Well, what we gonna do, baby? We ain't got no 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 kind of thing we gonna do." I, what we, so she said, "I don't know." I said, "Look here." You look, just follow me. Just mm-hmm. don't let me go. Mm-hmm. Whatever I do to, mm-hmm. with you, don't let me go. Mm-hmm. So I, if you saw, if you see the video, mm-hmm. I slung her around, slung her back. Saw it. And like we used to dance or something. Yeah. You know, she, and yeah. I slung her and put her in my arm. <laughs> and <turn her> over. <laughs> <laughs> she was right with me. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and it worked. Mm-hmm. And Don Cornelius mm-hmm. told me after yeah. that show, yeah. he said, right? This is one of the best shows ever. Had. Mm-hmm. I said, "Thank you, Don." Mm-hmm. I was watching it this morning. I said, "You know, you really tore that song up. The, the whole thing was great. You know, you and Tina. The interplay between both of the artists was fantastic. You know, yes, yeah, Rick. And I saw Ooh, Rick. I, really read, I met Rick for the first time personally okay. mm-hmm. years after we did that. Out mm-hmm. at the uh, what's the place out there in L.A. that the Universal Theater right, out there right. where mm-hmm. we were before? Mm-hmm. And Rick was standing there, and I walked up to him and I said, "Man." You know, I know, I said, you're a bad brother, man. I said, you know, I you do all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, you know, I can imagine what you would have did on that song. And you know what he told me? Mm-hmm. I couldn't have did that. Mm-hmm. He said, you got down, brother. Right. He said, I couldn't have did. did what you did. You did. Yes, indeed. So, you know, I take that. Thank you. Did you get a chance to perform that live on stage on in, on the concert scene with her? That song? Uh, no, no, mm-hmm. never. Mm-hmm. No, because we went on two different. Right. You know, her right. career went on. I was still trying to, mm-hmm. you know, I went back home, man. <laughs> got that with my boys. And, you know, I, <laughs> that was a big record. I still that was practice, but I wasn't record. pushing the work, you mm-hmm. know. So I never got to do But one time she was in Detroit and I went to the show and she pulled me up on the stage. To mm-hmm. song with okay. Her. Okay. That's awesome. Awesome. When you were speaking about uh, Dennis Edwards, you said something very important about dealing with personal issues and, and certain demons. And, you know, there's a real power in presenting that on record. And there's a song that sticks out to me from your uh, self-titled album called Daddy's Coming Home. And the reason why it stuck out to me is because there's like a real sincerity to it. You know, it's straight, clear to the point. And I just wanted to know where your where your head was at when you created that record. And also, was there like a conscious effort to place it on that album to kind of, you know, kind of expand the depth of it. Cause it's a little strays away from the, you know, romantic side of the album. Well, it was because that was my first album, man. I went to, uh, I got a chance to go to LA in 19, when was it, 71, I went to LA. Things wasn't going right for me and here in Pontiac. And I knew that if I didn't get away from here, some other things probably was gonna go wrong too. So I, uh, I had a thousand dollars from a stock that my uncle, one of my uncles left me. I took 500 and I had a newborn baby boy. Mm. And he was 60 to 69. I gave his mother, I said, here, here's 500 for some diapers and milk because I'm gone. I got my other 500 to try to do something. And I went out there and I met a lady, Kim Weston, at a guy's mm. church. And she had a record company. 
and with a guy named Mickey, Mickey Stevens, which I didn't know anything about him, but I met her at the church. So she said, I want you to come over and meet my mother, blah, blah, blah. And we did this album called Ronnie Magnier. And the reason, Julian, that I did that song, because I it came to me that I had this boy. I said, you know what? For whatever reason, something might happen. I want him to know how I feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wrote the song, Daddy's Coming Home. So that's, that's how that happened. Mm, sorry. And you know what? It's funny you say that because he, he, right now he uh we hit this like he's me and him was leaving, like me and my dad used to be man me and my dad were tight boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. so my my fa- my mother left my father when I was about fifteen and mm-hmm. I me and his mother broke up two years earlier when he was a little boy so mm-hmm. but I just wanted to know I'm here man no matter what mm-hmm. this beautiful so, thing yeah. comes across like, mm-hmm. I got so he can remember it forever you know when I'm gone he can listen to that you know mm-hmm. how I feel yes sir that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ronnie, uh, now and we're, we're going to go back to the, the four tops. Um, right now, you, you, the, the group is in is in a, a you know a, a we all wish Duke Fakir the best and, and to get better. Right now, you have uh, Michael Brock uh, in performing with you guys on the road. Um, uh, the opinion I th- feel like it is shared with a lot of us is that every time uh, someone new steps into a role and to, to fill a shoe or or to, to help another group out, there's a new formula, a new dynamic that must be discovered. Um, so what have you what have you found out uh, through the years when guys have been coming and going? Like, you know, Alex had had joined you guys only a couple years ago. So I knew a new, a new dynamic, new formula has to be discovered there. What is uh, what do you guys do to uh, discover the new formula? And, and what have you discovered uh, about the, the current uh, touring unit right now? Well, not what I discovered, what I know. OK, mm-hmm. OK. After. You know, it could be me. Duke was 88 years old, mm. December 26. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. There's 69 years, man. You hear me? Mm. That's, that is a hell of a career to do that. Right. But as anything else, boxer gets in the ring and he, he goes out of winter, but he want to go back in and get his braids knocked out. The, 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 the baseball player, no, he, you know, he's getting older. You can't throw the ball like you used to, man. Come on. And you know that's in us all to not want to leave what you've done that that long, okay? So, just like you just said, one thing I know is this: promoters, when the last <laughs> original guy from any group mm-hmm. leaves the group, right. first thing they're going to say is, "Well, uh, we're not offering the same money because it's a whole different thing now." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I've been looking at that for a few years now, mm-hmm. and then so you have to say, "Okay, now what's going to happen?" So, for me. There's a plus and there, you know, I'm sad because Duke is gone, but at the same time, I'm happy because we got a guy named Mike Brock. Mm-hmm. That's one of the greatest singers you could you could find. Mm-hmm. We're working with him by the movements a little bit on stage, but he's getting it. <laughs> 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 when, you, when you're a guy that's been on your own all the time, he's, he's saying with the dramatics for me. Right, 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 right. That's a whole different thing from mm-hmm. the full top. We got a high energy thing. Mm-hmm. You got to do your thing. But to answer the question, Kyle, um, that it's great that we have the new thing because now we can be the new four tops mm-hmm. and be like the older four tops mm-hmm. used to be. Mm-hmm. And said, now we can move. Duke was on a stool for over a year mm-hmm. and he had to be and I'm thankful for Duke. Mm-hmm. But now we got a guy that's out here moving with us and singing his ass off, man. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I personally believe that we are some of the greatest singers mm-hmm. that's out there right now at mm-hmm. this age. Yes, mm-hmm. You might not like everything, but mm-hmm. as far as what we do, mm-hmm. we do what we do. Mm-hmm. Very well mm-hmm. above that. So mm-hmm. there is a, there is a noticeable energy shift on uh, on the stage now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it, you could tell that mm-hmm. everything that you just said is true, mm-hmm. uh, and that you're you're really you guys are really uh, having a ball up there. Mm-hmm. And we got new music. Yeah, waiting. Yeah. Oh, oh great. wow! I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. We got a whole album. Nice. That we did mm-hmm. during COVID. Mm-hmm. Right before COVID, we started on this album. Mm-hmm. And during COVID, we kept recording. Mm-hmm. And we've got a whole album mm-hmm. ready to go. Okay. okay? Now, uh, we had a deal with, uh, um, what's the company, K- uh, Kev? Which one? Um, Universal? There you go. Universal. Mm-hmm. We had it with Universal. Mm-hmm. And nothing has come about it yet. But you mm-hmm. know what? 
our our music director now, Turhan, yeah. mm-hmm. said, "What are you waiting on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the fourth time, put it out on on YouTube and let the people, mm-hmm. you know what? And I'm doing. I'm now. I'm talking with him now. I say, hey, man, what you? We, everything is ready. Mm-hmm. Let's go. January is coming up. Let's mm-hmm. don't worry about mm-hmm. Universal and nobody else. Mm-hmm. Let's go on and do it. Mm-hmm. And if we're, Universal wants to pick that up, let's mm-hmm. just do it. But I'm telling you, man, I, the name will let us go yes. like we're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four tops. That sounds Absolutely. like T. That sounds so, like T. You know, <laughs> it's about the music. I saw it for yes. myself. Yeah. When I first got, when I got up on the stage, it wasn't about because I came up there for Levi. It was because the people love that music. Mm-hmm. And whoever is up there, I've been watching it, man, for 22 years now. Mm-hmm. It don't make no difference mm-hmm. who's there. So mm-hmm. any member of this group, uh, that thinks that it's about them, they're crazy. Mm-hmm. It's about the music and can we keep on mm-hmm. doing it good for the people? That's all that matters. So uh, this this train of thought about recording music with the Four Tops just l- led me down this, this, uh, this mindset here. It seems like maybe 15 or maybe almost 20 years ago, mm-hmm. I don't know, the Four Tops had an unofficial official release put out called East Coast, Coast West, West Coast. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's, the, oh. hey, that's the other one, Kyle, that mm-hmm. I didn't mention. Mm-hmm. It's I, a good record. I good. loved mm-hmm. that song, and I and I, and I don't know, because the first time I heard it was on MySpace, mm-hmm. and I don't believe it ever got an official mm-hmm. release. It was released on the Four Tops MySpace page mm-hmm. at the time, mm-hmm. but I never saw it got an official release, and I'm wondering, mm-hmm. what was that it was was it a part of an, an album that was started to be recorded that got canceled or was it a one-off recording what was that about because that was a great song no, that was little richard's niece believe it or wow. not wow <laughs> okay <laughs> i forget her name that was the lady she was little richard's niece mm-hmm. and she came and talked to Lawrence jr about doing this we did the record and talked to do mm-hmm. She brought, she had that. It was on her, it was going to be on her label, I think. Okay. And like you said, it didn't, offic- it didn't officially get out. Mm-hmm. And Theo was saying. I was going to say, Theo leaves that song. Yeah. Actually, and it was a great record. Yeah. I have, great sounding track. Yeah. Uh, they called it, it's the same exact song. Mm-hmm. They called it Miles Away. And it came out on a um, thing called Motor City Hits. That's actually on Apple Music. I, mm-hmm. I have it on my phone right mm-hmm. now. So um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. I don't know if you knew that, <laughs> but it's actually out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you pull that song? Is that song available to pull up yeah. when you want to hear it now? That's what I said. It's on yeah. um, this thing called, oh, whoa, just lost my connection. It's called Motor City Hits is mm-hmm. the album. Mm-hmm. Um, and the four tops are on it. And they, like I said, it's the song. They titled it Miles Away, mm-hmm. but it is that same East Coast, West Coast same song. song. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you said that because we got to check on that. Yeah, go go to get, get your money. Right. Get your money. It sounds like Kevin let the cat out of the bag. No, 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 that's no cat out the bag. That's get paid. Yeah. Get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 East Coast, West Coast. Yeah. Great, great track. And um, so now that you're talking about the new album, Ronnie, that the Four Tops are putting together, is that with the current lineup you have now? Does that include Duke? Um, what is the who's who's on the album? Who's doing Duke, it? Duke was on it because we started doing it. Okay. Right. And that's right. crazy. That's still great. On. But awesome. since that time, mm-hmm. you know, we've put Michael Brock on certain songs. Okay. And I'm sure when we get ready to do it, we're going to look over everything because mm-hmm. he's not on everything. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to put him on. Sometimes, you know, when you if you're not the lead singer and the background, everything is good. You know, there's some stuff like on that album you were talking about, the Simone album. I'm not on there at all. Mm-hmm. And I was a, and I was a four times at that time. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, you weren't you weren't on the jazz album? I wasn't on at all. I, didn't know that. I wasn't oh. even on the background. Oh, oh, just so happy that they were down when they were doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Had no idea. Mm-hmm. But you're on East Coast, yeah. West Coast, right? Yeah, I'm in the background on okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And you're on back to class. Mm-hmm. You're on back to yes. class with Drew Schultz. With Drew Schultz album. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good song too. Yeah. You had a great lineup then too, so. Well, man, like I said, um, it's great having you on the show here today. And uh, so we talk, we always like to ask, uh, who are some of the artists that are out today that you like, that you enjoy listening to? Uh, current, current artist. Singers, I'm going to tell you, it's a guy that I've been listening to, man, and he's uh, he's been good ever since I, his first time I heard him. And that's the guy, Jaheim. Is, is that his name? Oh, Jaheim, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a soulful. Jaheim, bad man. Mm-hmm. See, he's got that tone in his voice. Mm-hmm. His is 
not as gravel pit, but he has that other tone in his voice. He's got something in his voice. Mm-hmm. His voice is very rich. Mm-hmm. He has a very rich baritone. Something. There you go. I mean, dude, he's a bad man. Mm-hmm. And and naturally, um, I always uh, like Marvin Gaye. But I like yeah. Brooke Benton. Oh, yeah. Oh. That was one of my favorite artists. Mm-hmm. Rainy Night in Georgia. Yeah. No. No. So close. As we dance across the floor. So close. Okay. <laughs> my granddaddy mm-hmm. used to love him. And I was about nine, ten years old, man. I used to sit next to my granddad. He'd been in had too much to drink. And he'd be listening <laughs> to that song, mm-hmm. talking to himself. And I mm-hmm. sit up and listen to him, you know. And all those that kind of music, man, I when I start I started playing piano when I was mm-hmm. 10. Okay. So I had about six months lessons. After that, I told my mom and dad, I said, I don't want to play this lava band no more. I want to mm-hmm. play what I hear on the radio. Mm-hmm. So my piano teacher said, Well, if you if you want to play that, you gotta learn this first. Mm-hmm. I said, if I got to learn this first, I don't want to pay no more. Mm-hmm. So my mom and dad stopped paying, mm-hmm. and I went on by ear. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's what caused me to have my own style mm-hmm. piano playing wise, because my left hand mm-hmm. became bass. Because when you listen to a song, the only thing that you can play the bass on was the lower end of the piano. Mm-hmm. So my left hand became by itself. Mm-hmm. My right hand became everything I heard on the record, the horns, the guitar, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As I grew in my artistry, I became what you know, call a left-hand piano player, bass player, piano player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Awesome. So, you know, yes, but indeed. guys like that, uh, um, Les McCann was my favorite oh, piano player. Compared to okay. what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only that, the shampoo. I was eight, nine years old when I first heard that. Mm-hmm. That was one of his first jams. Right. And I liked him from then on. Ramsey Lewis, Herbie Hancock, and all of them. And like I said, with singers, it's hard to say who is the best because there's so many great great singers, yeah. I, you didn't ask me about the women, but me, okay, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan is okay. an all time for me. She's the goat for you. Shaka right? Khan <laughs> is an all time <laughs> singing this woman I know. Okay, all right. I love Aretha, I mm-hmm. love Glass and all, mm-hmm. but Shaka Khan is the can I say the word? No, probably not. The goat. <laughs> probably not. If you, have, if you have to ask, you probably should say it. At least I asked you guys. But I think yeah. I know what word you was going for. Calm, to the calm. Yes. Yeah. 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 She's a good, great singer. Another great singer. Then. Yeah, we certainly have some great singers. How about great groups? Group. How about say other, sing, other than the four tops? Some of your favorite groups? Well, naturally, Temptations, but I used to love the. Uh, I remember when oh, I used the to play the shooters. Yes. Yeah. All That's them a, guys, oh, man. I used to love all that. Yeah. Man. Yes, the the intruders. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> there was a running gag when when Billy Bannister was still alive. Uh, the backstage at the in the in the dressing rooms, Billy Bannister would always say that that the intruders were the greatest group. We had a lead singer who never sang on key. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part I of the tell stick, you who, who for me, mm-hmm. my all around great group. The dramatics. Really? Wow. Oh, they're awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling you something. If you ever seen them perform, mm-hmm. and a lot, and and, and again, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of, a lot of. Sometimes people make a statement. They say, "Well, you people, you know, you 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 entertainment people, y'all are, you know, y'all are these druggers and you this that." Mm-hmm. I say, everybody in the world is druggers, even the doctors that <laughs> give <stuff>, they druggers. <laughs> I say so, <laughs> but man. A lot of people have their problems. These guys, Ron Banks mm-hmm. is one of the greatest falsetto singers mm-hmm. I ever heard. Because he could go, he went, and Eddie, he could do it too. Mm-hmm. Eddie Kim. But Ron would go outside his falsetto back into his natural voice. Right, you yeah. couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and along with Ouija, and L.J. Reynolds is one of the greatest mm-hmm. singers. He's, mm-hmm. he's one of the greatest, I can say. Mm-hmm. But that group, man, they were really I'm telling you, man, if they hadn't had a lot of the problems they had in mm-hmm. that was inside of you, they would be out there with the greats. It was one of the greats. Mm-hmm. So other than the Temptations, do you have another any other groups that you like to tour with or acts that you prefer like touring with? Uh, we, we've done a few things with the Spinners. Okay. Ooh, they, yeah. They're great. Even another though one, you yeah. have uh, uh, Henry is down now, mm-hmm. but still you got the other guys. Mm-hmm. And they're going around with just four guys. They're good, too. Yeah. Yeah. And they really sound good. Mm-hmm. We even thought about, you know, Say when we're off a lot of times when we're not working with the Timbs, mm-hmm. we could do a show with them and you know, line up one of these girls that still represents mm-hmm. 
the girls in the days because you know it's not a, it's, I don't know if it's any of the real girl groups that's out there representing mm-hmm. mm. yeah. I'm sure they got some but I haven't seen them marvelous mm-hmm. and, and, and the, the glasses mm-hmm. the, the groups that were back there man right. you could get a girl a couple of girls and let them I said let them open up our show mm-hmm. doing all of the songs that the marvelous and the other girls were mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so I know I'm not a, sure if Catherine's still touring or not. I know the Marvelettes are touring. Catherine Anderson, I'm not sure if she's still touring or not. Okay. She did have a, group, a new group she put together of Marvelettes. So I'm not sure if she's still But what I'm saying is always mm-hmm. somebody that comes up, mm-hmm. a sister, a cousin, mm-hmm. somebody that's interested in taking the name and do something with it. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And they can just get, it, it's, that's how it is, man. The new comes in and takes over the old. I don't care mm-hmm. what you're doing. That's the way of the world. So yeah. that's the cycle. Keep that sound there's, alive. Oh, yeah. Also, let me just say, mm-hmm. you know, Kevin, I told you that I'm opening up my, uh, my own club here in Pontiac. Okay. Yeah, you told me that last time mm-hmm. I saw you. Mm-hmm. And Jawan, look, me and my wife just had a birthday party. I've been working on this club uh, for since December. Mm-hmm. Me and my, I got some people that's involved with me with it. And we, uh, a lot of people didn't believe that it was feasible. Mm-hmm. But I said, look, we I'm in a place where we don't have nothing. Mm-hmm. I live in, I, I, I was raised in Pontiac, Michigan. Okay. And to this day, we, we don't have a side bar, man, where, where a couple will want to go and sit down with your wife or your woman and, mm-hmm. and enjoy yourself. We, we don't have that here. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. you got to go to some other place. You either got to go to an Italian restaurant Got to go to a Chinese or something. Mm-hmm. Got to go somewhere with somebody else, not in the African American community mm-hmm. owns. Right. Mm-hmm. So I got a place, man, that we've put together, mm-hmm. and it is something, man. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm so proud of it. We had a birthday party. Me and my wife are Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. We had a Sagittarius birthday party. My couple weeks ago, almost three, and the community came out, man. And support so good to the let me know. That was right by what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And I hope we, well, our grand opening is going to be uh, the end of March, early April. And I'm inviting all you guys. Oh, oh road trip. Oh, road trip. Road trip. Road trip. If you can get there, man, if you can get there, please come. Mm-hmm. That's for You're going to love it, man. You're going Because I've got some people that say, man, we, we don't even get to have this in Detroit. Mm-hmm. I said, wow. well, this, this is my travels around the world, man. Mm-hmm. And I. I'm blessed to see a mm-hmm. lot of things mm-hmm. and I see a little bit of this and see a little bit and I bring it back mm-hmm. home and I found a place, man. It's like a mini theater. Got mm-hmm. a balcony that was mm-hmm. tailor-made mm-hmm. for a club and I brought one of my buddies that was in the seventh grade with me and he's building houses. Mm-hmm. Now look how God looked out for me. Mm-hmm. I came back home. I said, look here, Rick. I said, man, this 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 here could be a hell of a... I want to bring a, like a cotton club or, or mm-hmm. Island Nights to mm-hmm. Pontiac, man. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and said, uh-uh, man. This is a new, this is a new millennium. So I know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. but you want a club like Ghost and Power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. So Kev, I, I, I looked, Julian, I looked over at him. I said, can you do that? Mm-hmm. He said, yeah. I said, how? He said, LED lights. I said, mm-hmm. LED light. Man, look here. Mm-hmm. My club look like a, 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 a man, just come and see. Okay. How far is, how far is Pontiac from Detroit? Is it near Detroit? 25 miles north. Okay. Oh, 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 that's right in Detroit. It's in the neighborhood. Now, what is the date? What is the date of the club opening again? again? Don't have the actual date, but okay. we know we're going to actually, within a year, last December is when we started. Mm-hmm. And we know that we're going to be open for sure. The end of March, early April. April. Gotcha. And we'll, you know, our, our uh, it's on uh, Sunset Island is the name of it. Ronnie McNeil, Sunset Island. Mm-hmm. And it will be on, on, you can go online and look at sunsetislandentertainment.com and find out anything. Going okay. On. So you ha- you, are you having like a, a performance or a show on that opening night of the club? Well, yeah. What, 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 I'm, what I'm doing is I'm selling entertainment. Okay. So on Thursdays, we have all blues. Okay. I got blues act there. Mm-hmm. On Friday, we got R&B stepping. Mm-hmm. We have the contest, hundred dollar contest for the best side, being the best seven. Okay. On Saturday, I'm gonna try and give it to um, you know, a lot of people try to talk me out of I'm gonna give it to the hip hop crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh all they need is a DJ. Because mm-hmm. you know, they are they, they want to do the cameras and look and do their thing. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say, Oh, you don't want that young crowd in here, they don't know. I said, wait a minute. I was young. Somebody gave me a chance. I was mm-hmm. as ridiculous as they've been when I was young. Mm-hmm. Give them, let me give them a chance. Mm-hmm. And then I let everybody know when we had our party. I said, you know, we got a 
we got a balcony up here that's, that's just made for throwing somebody over and coming in with some BS. People say, well, but you gotta protect, you gotta protect yourself, man. Oh, but yeah. you know, I'm a fine. Mm. I'm a uncle. I'm a, I am can talk. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm 74 years old, mm. man. Mm. I know how to talk to mm. the people. I know how to talk to kids. Look here, y'all. Mm. We got a history of tearing up everything we had here. Mm. That's what they say about us, period. Mm-hmm. As black people, mm-hmm. you don't have to prove nobody right. Mm-hmm. Keep proving nobody right. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's do it. This is mm-hmm. the only place we got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. all me and my team. But at the same time, my heart is trying to bring something mm-hmm. to my city mm-hmm. that I know we need. And right. I don't know nothing else but the entertainment business. Right. So mm-hmm. I don't know nothing else to do but mm-hmm. this. Right. So that's what I'm at. Mm. Y'all come and check it. Well, we yeah. can come there, Kyle. You, maybe you can stamp and do a song or something, Kyle. Uh, maybe. Bless me. Hey, you let Kyle do, do a song mean? if he comes. He wants me to see. What, I what said you let get? Kyle sing a song if he comes down there. Kyle, come do what he wants. Do you hear down. that, Kyle? <laughs> hey, Tom, you can do anything we want. We got a VIP room that you can close the door if you rent. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. All right. So for oh, safe oh, for safety oh, concerns, oh. I'm bringing my girlfriend with me. <laughs> It's not going to be with just here. anybody. But. This is funny. The ordinance up here, Pontiac won't let me have dancers. Okay. Mm, okay. That's, you know I wanted to do that. Right, right. Have, have a dancer. So we can't have. I said, even in bikini, uh, you know, bikini, bikini bases, they, know, they said, no, the law is if you have any kind of dancing that mm. promotes sexual desire. I said, what? You could turn the TV on to see that on every station. <laughs> but that's what it is. But we have a room. Mm. Right. Mm hmm. Right. I'm gonna buy a disposable pole, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I'll call man. up the the, the local sheriff and say, mm. "Just tell me when you're on the way, okay?" <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, but uh, uh, all uh, sad. You know, yeah. we 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 are very thankful. I'm thankful, man, that I got a good team with me, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that God let me be able to put it together, man. And, Mm-hmm. Have something for my people here, man. I think when y'all come and see it, you're gonna be proud of me. No, well, I'm, for one thing, I'm proud of myself. Man. Well, you should be, man. We're proud of you. We're honored to have you on the show. Let's give Ronnie McNair a nice round of applause, Absolutely. man, and thank you for coming on the R and B Showcase. And we appreciate you coming on and sharing such great history, and, and had a lot of fun having you on the show, man. So thank you very much for being on the show. And again, I want to thank uh, my co-host, Mr. Kevin White. Thank you. Mr. Julian Seward. Always a pleasure. And Good co-host. to meet you, Julian. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. And of course, co-host and producer, Mr. Kyle Mack. Thank you. One Good more time, give it up. Too, man. Give it up for See, Ronnie. I didn't, know you, I didn't know you other two guys. I, I, know, I know your other uh, henchmen right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, I, don't know. These, I didn't know y'all. Yeah, they're, <laughs> so they're with me every <laughs> week. We're, we're all together on the radio every week. You know, when Julian does a show on the station before he does a show of coming on early in the day and then uh, comes on with, on my show. So he's part of this team, too, for the R&B Showcase. So we okay. appreciate having him here. So. Well, sure. thanks again. One more time for Ronnie Mac sure. from Pontiac. Give it up, <laughs> Ronnie. Thank y'all. Current All member right. of the fabulous Four Tops. And uh, I see you at the Super Bowl with the Lions. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I hear you. I, 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 I hear you. I, okay. I bet him. I bet him to win the Super Bowl at forty to forty-two to one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. In the beginning of the season, I, you know, I you I made a big bet. And check this out. Mm-hmm. My other team is still in there too. If they win today, mm-hmm. but I don't know what's going on. I hear you, Jacksonville. I don't know. They might. Uh-huh. Have, hopefully, they win by now. They might be a lost already. I don't know. That's but right. I got the Lions. Mm-hmm. That's a great thing. <laughs> I'm pulling for the Lions too. All right, they're my See secretary. you guys later, man. Thank y'all so Good. much. Thank, Thank you, you Ronnie Mac. One more time for Ronnie McNair. I'm Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase Live.